Short-term targets. Set short-term targets. What I mean by this is we planned to do a tour 13 days ago. And we had over 600 register in four local markets when nobody did events in 2020 in 13 days. That's kind of crazy. That's kind of nuts. It's kind of weird. It's a little insane. I've learned that when we set a target in the short term that's massive and we make it public and we tell everyone, it forces us to push a little harder. Having massive short term targets also pulls me in that direction constantly faster and it forces me to either wake up and hit the short-term target and do everything I can or to embarrass myself. Who's willing to embarrass themselves in 2021? <laughs> everything will change once you do. Everything will change once you commit and say, dude, I'm okay embarrassing myself in 2021. I set a goal to have a thousand agents register for these four cities. We did not hit it, but man, we did so well because I set such a massive short-term target to begin with. Like if I were to go back into selling insurance, it wouldn't be, you know, how do I make 10 or 20 grand this month? It would, it would be, I'm gonna write 100 life insurance policies on my own this month. That's a little different, isn't it? But it's a short-term target that's so massive that it's gonna force me to pay attention. What I've learned is, well, I'll ask a question instead. In the past, who has set a goal and not hit it? I would say we all have, I'm sure, right? Do you know why you didn't hit it? Any guesses? Do you know why you didn't hit it? Why didn't you hit the goal when you set it? Why didn't you, why, 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 why didn't you do whatever it takes to get there? Distractions, wasn't committed enough, weren't focused, too far off. That's actually a good answer too. And what do most people do when they don't hit a goal? They give up, they quit, they lower their goal. You know what the answer is? Raise it. Like, I, you're like, I, I, I don't understand that one. Like, I didn't hit it, so I need to raise it? I didn't get there. So make it bigger? <laughs> like, I don't understand. It wasn't big enough to challenge you. It wasn't big enough to wake you up. It wasn't big enough to get to where you did whatever it took. It wasn't big enough for you to stay focused. It wasn't big enough for you to stay committed. It wasn't big enough to keep your attention for a long period of time. Here's what I've learned. When I set a goal to make $100,000 as a brand new agent at 20 years old, when I'm in college, taking 21 credit hours a semester, full-time student athlete, playing basketball practices, games, tournaments, weekends, etc. I could have used the excuse I don't have a lot of time, right? I set a goal and I said, I will earn $100,000 my first year in the insurance industry. Selling life insurance through cold calling and cold door knocking with no leads, with no sales experience, could barely sell insurance. It got my attention. And I wrote it down and said, I will earn $100,000 my first year in the insurance industry. And I made $117,361.13 in my first eight months. Why? Because it scared me to death. And the difference maker was, I told everyone it was going to happen. Who set a goal, but you really didn't believe it? Who set a goal and told nobody? Because you're like, I don't want anybody to know. <laughs> if I don't hit it, nobody knew. Right? Guess what? That's the problem. That's the problem. For things to change, you got to change. When you say you're going to do something, you got to do it. 
When you set something, you gotta fully believe it's gonna happen. Because I'm telling you, when you fully believe something is gonna happen and you commit and you go all in and you do whatever it takes and you set a massive short-term target and you tell everyone, it will wake you up. It will force you to get more creative. It will force you to work harder than you've ever worked. And it will force you to go do things you never thought you could do. Our team, my team thought I was nuts doing this. It's like, dude, nobody's gonna show up. I'm like, try me. Good news is, if you guys didn't show up, it'd be really weird. And I'd be standing up here for two hours by myself, so thank you, okay? <laughs> what most people don't know is the one thing that means the most to me out of everything we do is when people show up. Because as a new agent, as a several, owning several companies now that do seven figures with total revenue of over 10 million, I've always showed up. Step one of success, just show up. 200 registered, 50 showed up. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's why 92% of insurance agents fail in their first three years. That's a problem. And the reason is, I always ask, why, why, why do so many new insurance agents fail? Why is it so difficult? Why can't we make money? What happens? And you can make up a lot of reasons. But the best answer is they didn't show up. Give yourself a hand for showing up tonight. Thank you for committing. And you've done step one, by the way. You've done step one. You've showed up. You wanna know what step two is? Yes. Thank you. You guys still with me? Yes. Okay, you guys still with me? Yes. Okay, you guys still with me? Yes. You guys still with me? Yes. No, don't run up here, but I'm rewarding someone for paying attention, staying engaged, and staying focused. I'll take your money, Cody. Thank you. Thank you. Guess what? When someone's asked a question, I pay attention. I also, here's a sales tactic for you. I don't believe in asking a question not getting an answer and moving on. When you're in the middle of a sales process, in the middle of an appointment, when you're talking to a prospect and you ask them a question, do not move on until you get an answer. Because what you're doing is you're psychologically telling them it's okay to not answer me. And it's not okay. Because I gotta be in control to make the sale. I was in Joplin, Missouri years ago and I was sitting across the living room from a gentleman and, he, and, and, and I said, sir, do you know where your life insurance policy is? And he said, what? I don't, know. I don't know. That's human nature, by the way. Everyone says that, and nobody means it. <laughs> Trust me on that. And I said, well, I said something that, who wants to know what I said? I said something that changed my life forever, and I still use it today. And I said, if you knew where it was, where would it be? And he's like, well, that's a weird question. Like, I don't know where it is, but if you knew, where would it be? And he's like, well, if I knew where it was, it'd probably be in the filing cabinet right over there. He's on the couch. I'm in the recliner. And I'm like, this filing cabinet? Yes. I said, can I open it? Yes. Boom. Guess what's sitting in the top drawer of his filing cabinet? His life insurance policy in eight seconds before, he said... I don't know. That's insane. Get answers to your questions. Because when I, when I get to the end of an appointment and I show someone options 
and I have them choose and make a decision, they're more likely to choose and make a decision if I've trained them to make a decision the whole time. It's not okay to ask a question and not get an answer. Here's the secret to making sure that you get answers to questions every single time you ask them. Number one, always ask a follow-up question. Because I promise you, they don't mean the answer they gave you. And number two, use a hypothetical. I realize you don't know, but hey, if, if you did, then you'll get an answer. I asked my wife, hey babe, where do you want to go to dinner? I don't know. Who's ever heard that? Always. Come on now. Come on now. And I'm like, well, baby, if you had to choose, what would you say? Said, yeah, maybe Chinese. I'm like, all right. Which Chinese restaurant? Exactly. Just keep, keep moving, right? Keep going. We have, we have uh, my assistant tried that on her boyfriend back in Springfield, Missouri a few weekends ago. What do you want for dinner? I don't know. Well, if you had to choose, what would you say? Boom, he made a decision. Always get answers to your questions. It's not okay. Like when I drive through my neighborhood, if I wave at a neighbor and they don't wave back, that's a problem. I stop the car, slow down, and keep waving until they respond. I, they wave back now. Persistence. Persistence pays off. Persistence pays off. Because what happened is if I don't get them to wave back, number one, they're just a jerk. But number two, if they don't wave back and I wave the next time I come through, they're not going to wave again. They don't have to. I'm training my neighbor that it's okay to not respond to me. And it's not okay. <laughs> when you're in an appointment, you ask questions, get answers. Who just learned something that's going to change the way you sell in 2021? <laughs> Boom! Did you get your money's worth yet? How much did you guys pay? Okay, good. We got, a, we got an ROI already. Good. Good. Set short-term targets. I believe in setting short-term targets that are so massive, they get my attention. I'm like, dude, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna go sell 30 of my family members in the next eight days. Something nuts, and then I'm gonna tell them all. I'm selling all of you. That's the way you should attack this thing, trust me. Who's gonna start setting short-term targets in 2021? Okay, good. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. Rule number one of my eight rules to 8% as I came up with whole new content for this tour is focus on revenue. Most insurance agents wake up, we get in the office, it's 9 a.m., I'm gonna get some coffee, I'm gonna go talk to Susie by the printer, I'm gonna go hang out with Joe.